If you would, you can turn your Bibles to the book of Deuteronomy chapter 6. We're going to be contemplating just a few verses from this particular section as we wind up tonight uh, our series on the family. Uh, we started it some time ago, and uh, like it normally happens on our Sunday evenings, we have lots of things that uh, kind of interrupt uh, and uh, uh, in good ways, uh, men's leadership nights, uh, and then Florida School preaching students are here teaching us as well. Uh, so it's always a good thing. But uh, tonight, <clears throat> we've come back uh, to this series of lessons, uh, and we're going to be kind of wrapping up uh, the whole thing, talking about the creation of memories. You know, we've talked about how it is necessary to have uh, in our families, as is given by God, um, mothers that love, fathers that lead, children that uh, obey. We need to know how to communicate. We know need to know how even to fight fair. Uh, and uh, other topics we've considered along this road uh, have no doubt led us to this place where we, I believe, are, are going to contemplate tonight one of the um, more important lessons. Now, they're all important, right? I mean, every time we can go to God's Word and we can open up the book and we can say, this is what God has to say about it. It's going to be an important lesson. Now, there are lessons that we might like over perhaps other lessons, but they're all God's lessons. And he teaches us how uh, we are to live, not only in this world as a whole, uh, and to have, <clears throat> to, and to have uh, the, the relationships that we're supposed to have, uh, but uh, how we are to dwell in family, and how we are to dwell in spiritual uh, family, and so on and so forth. So we're going to go back to Deuteronomy, uh, and we're going to look uh, in uh, Deuteronomy in chapter 6, uh, just a, 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 a couple of things, but we are going to be talking about making memories. You know, one of the things that you know we, we often talk about when we talk about family is uh, making memories. Do you have lots of memories of your childhood? I don't know. I mean, are most of those memories good? Memories can come in a number of different forms, can't they? Uh, there are, for instance, uh, memories that no doubt we would consider precious memories. Memories that when we think of them, they put a smile on our face. They make us laugh. They once again remind us uh, of just how blessed that we are and uh, how wonderful you know, our lives, especially with the lives of those who are about us that we call a uh, family, how good it has been to be with them. Maybe anniversaries, maybe <coughs> birthdays or some special times uh, during the course of our lives as we spend them together, uh, make up those Memories. There, there are other memories, however, for some of us that are, are not exactly precious memories, but they would be what we would call tough memories. Memories of things where not only were we uncomfortable, but perhaps we found ourselves in situations that were not I exactly what God would desire for either our lives or the lives of the people that are around us. I mean, it happens to folks all the time. Kids abandoned by parents. Children choosing to do things that are contrary to parents' laws, national laws, so on and so forth. Not all memories are precious memories. There are in, instead uh, these tough memories that we can sometimes conjure up when it comes to family. But then there's a third, I think, type of memory. Now, you can create all different categories of memories you know, good, bad, however you want to put it. But there's certainly one type of memory, and you can again call this whatever you want to, uh, that we need to be concerned about when it comes to family. I'm very simply going to call them faith memories. Okay. What do you remember about your spirituality when it comes to your physical family? I mean, did you grow up in a household like some people do, where the gospel is taught, prayers are said at meals, Sunday was a day you went to church, Wednesday was when you went to Bible study, you dare not utter anything that is remotely close to a curse word, and on and on down the line. Are those the things that were implanted in you from the time that you were small? If it was, then that's a great, great thing. And I think when that happens, you find parents who are willing to do uh, what they're supposed to do according to scriptural things. Not everybody's life is that way. Not everybody grows up with that kind of benefit. Not everybody has parents that are attuned in that direction or, or children who are willing to obey, as we've already talked about in our series of lessons. But 
nonetheless, God tells us that there's an order and a way that things should be in this world when it comes to our families. And when it comes to our spirituality, we need to constantly be asking ourselves this question. Are, are we creating faith memories? Everybody know what muscle memory is? You know what muscle memory is? It's when you do some task over and over and over and over and over that after a while your body just kind of naturally does that. Thing. You know, we see this kind of thing all the time in, in our world, usually regarding mundane tasks, things that we just simply do by rote every single day. And our body is just so used to doing them that we don't even really think about it. Yeah. You ever bought a new vehicle? Ever bought a new vehicle? Uh, not new per se, but you know, new to you type of vehicle that had the gear shifter in a different place than it had in the car that you had for the previous six years. I mean, when I get in our van, I still reach for the stick on the column rather than the, on the dashboard. Well, why? Well, well, because that's where it was for years for me as I drove our, our truck. Now, the same thing is true spiritually. Families need to be concerned about the spiritual memory that they are creating. And there are four simple points um, I'm just going to give to you from Deuteronomy. Uh, I'd love to say that tonight is going to be the best lesson you've ever heard Ed preach. Okay? I'd love to be able to say that Ed is up here at 100%, but uh, if you can tell from my voice and you can tell from my constantly watering eyes, <laughs> I, I'm not exactly feeling my best. So we're going to give you these points. Uh, and uh, I'm going to just simply trust that you as your families will take them home uh, and consider them and look at them. But go back to Deuteronomy. <clears throat> and we're going to read uh, beginning at verse um, 5. Deuteronomy, excuse me, Deuteronomy chapter 6. And we're going to begin at verse 5. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your might. And these words, shall, these words that I command you today shall be in your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your children and shall talk of them when you sit uh, in your house and when you walk by the way and when you lie down and when you rise. You shall bind them as a sign on your hand and they shall be as frontlets between your eyes. You shall write them on the doorpost of your house and on your gates. And when the Lord your God brings you into the land that he swore to your fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, to give you with <clears throat> great and good cities that you did not build, and houses full of goods that, uh, of the things that you did not fill, and cisterns that you did not dig, and vineyards and olive trees that you did not plant, and when you eat and are full, then take care lest you forget the Lord, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. It is the Lord your God you shall fear him you shall serve and by his name shall you swear okay so these are our verses that we're considering and there are basically four points that i want you to kind of gather from this now again remember this all has to do or we are placing it within the framework as i believe as uh, god here the construct of the home okay we are building something it's not something that is unimportant it's not something that we should, you know, kind of take lightly. You know, sometimes, you know, when we think of, when we think of, uh, you know, things of uh, such a nature that we have a tendency to not make as much of them as we should. Uh, when in reality, uh, we should really be considering these things and uh, putting them firmly and fully into this idea of what it means to, to have a home. Number one, number one, we must learn. Let's learn. Uh, it's a pretty simple point. Verses 10 through 12 uh, talk all about, and when the Lord your God brings you into the land, he swore to your fathers, uh, houses full of things, uh, all of that, he's going to provide, you know, for you. Okay? Everything that we know from that point leads up to that point. Okay? God is, is, is telling you, here's what's going to happen. Here's what's going to happen. Here, here's how it's going to go in, in you know, the, the land. Here, here is what you are going to see houses that you did not build and trees that you did not plant. And uh, we know that uh, the land that they're going to is also described as a land that flows with milk and honey. 
uh, it was a wonderful place, a place that, you know, God had prepared for them. Uh, but in God's preparing, God realizes that, you know, because there's very little work for them to do, there's a danger in, in that. Uh, so he doesn't start there. He, he starts instead with, there are some things you need to learn and to know. Okay. There are things that you need to learn and need to know before you get into this land and be convinced of. If it's going to go well with you when you get there, uh, then these things need, <coughs> these things need, uh, to be, uh, the case. If you go back to, I guess, the beginning, uh, of, of the chapter, go back to the beginning of the chapter, uh, God, uh, begins his instruction this way. He says, now this is the commandment, the statutes and the rules that the Lord your God commanded me to teach you that you may do them in the land in which you are going over to possess it, that you may fear the Lord your God, you and your son and your son's son, by keeping his statutes and his commands, which I command you all the days of your life, and that your days may be long. In other words, you got to be learned. you got to be willing to learn. Now, that sounds familiar. We kind of talked about that a little bit this morning. You have to be an apt pupil. You can't be the stiff-necked, hard-of-heart type of person that so often is used as um, uh, a description of those in the, in the Old Testament. Okay? You can't be that kind of person, uh, unwilling to, uh, you know, learn. And thus, if our families are going to have, um, if our families are going to meet the expectations of God, if they are going to truly build these great and wonderful memories together, then shouldn't those memories first and foremost revolve around the notion of what does God say uh, about these things? You know, there are plenty of memories that people have uh, of the time in which they, you know, grew up, uh, of the time uh, the, uh, of, you know, when they got to spend, you know, family together. I, I don't want to pick on uh, anyone, but certainly not my, my neighbors. But if people went... <clears throat> If people studied the scripture, if people went to worship, if people committed themselves to Lord as much as my neighbor across the street and kind of catty corner from me committed to Sunday mornings on his boat, then we would all be super Christians. But I'm telling you what, about every Sunday morning, when I'm getting up to come here and finalize things for, for worship, He's out getting the boat ready for him and his family. And I'm sure they have wonderful family times together. But are they spiritual times too? Now, I don't mean to make it sound as if, you know, every moment of every day you ought to be sitting around talking about what you learned from the Bible. I don't think that's it. But I do think that everything that we do in and of our families needs to be Bible-centered. The recreational activities that we choose, the, the, the words that come out of our mouth, the, the attitudes that we display, all, all of these things that we manifest in our families ought to be coming from Scripture to create those memories that are pure memories, are memories that cannot be defiled by things that are in the world. Second of all, we have to live it. Okay? God says, hear my word. Then he says, you have to live my word. You have to live my word. You know, it's one thing to sit around and have family devotionals. It's a whole other thing to hold each other to that standard daily. You know, we can sit and talk all we want to about, you know, being faithful and true and, and righteous and kind and loving and, you know, pick any attributes you want. You can sit around and talk about those things all you want to. But then what happens when we actually, you know, have to go into real life situations, the scenarios, and we find ourselves in the day-to-day -day grind. Are, are we holding each other to that standard? You know, you know, do we require that a life be lived along the, the, the same lines as what we would teach? I mean, if you consider verse 3, Hear, therefore, O Israel, and be careful to do them, that it may go well with you, and that you may multiply greatly as the Lord, the God of your fathers, has promised you, and a land flowing with milk and honey. 
It's not enough for families to sit around and contemplate things, think about things, learn things. Uh, it's certainly necessary. But you need to live things, too. Uh, you know, I mean, think about it for a minute. If all your memories were just memories of something that somebody said to you, uh, that seems kind of weird, right? Um, you know, and you may have good memories of people and things that they have told you and words of encouragement, and, and that's grand. But what if all of your memories were just words spoken to you? Rather than things that were done or accomplished, or I, I don't know, I would tend to think that life would be a little bit different. Uh, sometimes, quite frankly, boring. That's not really living. That's us sitting around talking about things. We have to actually live out these commands. John chapter 14, verse 23, if anyone loves me, he will obey my teaching. So we have to hear God's word or learn God's word. We have to obey or live God's word. Now, <clears throat> recent survey about, uh, and there's a lot of these done recently because it seems as if this is one of the big concerns that you know we have, and, and rightfully so. But but how how do we retain our, our, our children in, in church settings and church families? Uh, you know, I mean, what what do we do? And you know, have we seen just a great amount of, of them leaving and not coming back? Well, lots of studies have been done. Uh, this one basically says this: if both parents are faithful and active, okay, uh, both parents are, are learning and they're living uh, God's word, then there's typically a 93% chance that the kids who are in an environment of that nature will have an authentic faith. In other words, they'll do the same thing. They'll follow in the footsteps of their parents, 93% of the time. When one parent is faithful and active, the number drops to 73%. If both parents are semi-active, then the number drops to 53%. In other words, if you're the kind of you know, family where you talk about spiritual things from time to time, you never really seem to do too much about it, but it's always there and it's in the background, just like the Bible on the shelf and the you know, worship services on you know, Christmas and Easter. and you know, It's there, but it's just kind of taking the back seat. Then the number drops to 53%. If both parents attend infrequently and are not involved in spiritual activities on a daily, weekly basis, the number drops to 6%. Uh, only 6% uh, of children will themselves, coming from a family of that nature, have an authentic faith, or a faith that actually is lived out uh, in, in the course of their lives. You have to learn it, and you have to live it. Number three, you have to teach it. Uh, notice uh, this, and this is the reason we typically go to this uh, section of scripture, because we want to talk about, you know, the necessity of one generation teaching the next generation. This is that section that most of us are probably very, very familiar with. Uh, you shall teach them diligently, verse 7, to your children. You shall talk to them when you sit in your house, when you walk along the way, when you lie down, when you rise up, when you, uh, you shall bind them as a sign on your hand. They shall be as front lips between your eyes, put them on your doorpost, and, and on he goes, Right? So we have to learn, we have to live, and then once we've learned and once we've lived, then we need to turn around and we need to teach. We need to teach. And this one should be kind of a, I don't want to say no-brainer, but it should be. I mean, when you're given the knowledge of salvation, when you are given the understanding of what it is that your creator, your God, expects uh, of you, how could you not want to turn around and share that information? I mean, there's a reason why we call, you know, the, that uh, New Testament uh, teaching of Jesus Christ came, uh, died on the cross, saved uh, us through his sacrifice, uh, sits uh, at the right hand of God, ever living to make intercession for us. There's a reason why we call all of that the good news. You know, typically when it comes to, to good news in any other area of our life, we don't sit on it. We, we share it. We want to take it to everybody. We want them to, to know uh, just how 
grand it is. When something happens in our families, and rightfully so, when good things happen, you better believe we're on the Instagram and the Facebook and just about any other social media we can find with the pictures, hopefully, of that event uh, and just how great it was for us. And man, we're sharing it with everybody. It ought to be the same with our spiritual matters, too. I mean, parents especially need to be sharing their faith with their kids. And the final thing, and again, just kind of cutting right to the heart of these, is that we must protect it. Look at verses 10 and 11 again. And when the Lord your God brings you into the land, they swore to your fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, to give you, with great and good cities that you did not build, and houses full of things that you did, did not fill, and cisterns that you did not dig, and vineyards and olive trees that you did not plant. And when you eat and are full, then take care lest you forget the Lord. We need to protect those memories. Do you ever lose a memory? There are things that I don't remember, but it's funny. I know that they're supposed to be there. You know, and, and some of them really, really hurt me. You know, I, my, my sister died when I was really young, and, and I can't remember what her voice sounded like. And, and that kind of hurts me. And I wish I could remember that. There, there are other things that, that I know should be there, but I just can't seem to bring them back. And that poses a difficulty. But it should never be that way with God and his word and, and what he's done for us. You know, there's a reason why we take the Lord's Supper every Sunday. Now, you've probably no doubt had conversation with folks who from time to time will say things like, well, you know, when you do it every Sunday, doesn't it? kind of get old after a while? Well, my response is typically always, you know, for some it may get old, but for me it's just a constant reminder of where I need to be. At the foot of the cross, thanking my God for all that he has ever done for me. And I think that we need to be of that mindset constantly. When it comes to our, to our families, we, 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 just like we would protect those memories that we have with one another, we need to protect the, the spiritual memory of our family. You know, my mom was a big picture person. Uh, you know, several years ago when you know, she was in the midst of a move, she, she said, oh, do you want, I got some pictures, do you, would you like to have? I said, yes, not realizing that it would fill an entire trunk. Uh, so I got all these pictures, and, and we, we've not really done anything with them. But my mom created album after album after album after album after album of, of all these pictures. And growing up, she had camera in her hand all, all the time, creating those memories. Now, why do that if you're not going to protect them? You know, why take a picture if you're not going to preserve it, put it in an album somewhere? It doesn't make much sense to us physically, but certainly... It wouldn't make much sense spiritually either to, you know, go out of our way to, to learn and, and then to live and then to teach in our families these things of God, uh, only to allow it over the course of time to slip and not protect it. Too many people are very far from, you know, where they once were spiritually because they've just simply not taken this step. It's unfortunate, but during the course of just a short time that I, I've been in ministry, I've seen it happen with people's lives. They, for most of their lives, they, they, they run well, and, and they do all right, and they have their struggles like just about everybody else does, only at the end, to allow things to intervene, to slip. You watch them slowly over the course of days and weeks, and months drift away from where they're supposed to be back into a world that they didn't spend their lives devoted to and yet somehow has ended up capturing them. 
memories. When I think of family, I think of memories. And, and hopefully you do too. And hopefully when you think of the memories of your family, you think of the spiritual memories. And maybe that you didn't grow up that way. Maybe that wasn't your household. It can be today. Whether you're the child or you're the parent or you're the grandparent or you're the great-grandparent, there's a part for you to play in placing in all things that are family, spiritual, spirituality. Well, maybe tonight you're here and you're not part of God's family simply because you've yet to take the steps to become a child of God. As we close out this series, as we consider the family as God would have it, don't let it end without you saying, I want to be a part of that. I want to be part of God's family. Why not hear his word tonight and believe and repent of your sins and confess that Christ is the son of the living God. Enter into the waters of baptism to be washed clean. Maybe you have some other need, some struggle, some difficulty, some prayer request. If you're here tonight and you have any need, make it known while we stand and sing. Oh,